Simon, let's, before we get into the user's questions, which everybody submitted via uh, Slideo, what's your final thoughts, especially on mental health, especially what's going to happen here? Yeah. Um, and I did want to end on that, on that note because, um, you know, it, it was heartbreaking receiving some of the DMs. Um, you know, um, you've inspired me into action, but at the end of the day, I can only do what I can do. Um, and everybody needs to be mentally prepared for loss here. Um, I, it, this kind of brings me into the situation that I was in um, before this. Um, I was mourning the loss of my father, and my father, um, he was born in the Great Depression. Um, he, he survived World War II, um, and uh, he became a self-made millionaire and lost all of his money in the stock market in one go in the dot-com boom and bust in 2000. Hmm. Um, and uh, I vowed to support my father in figuring out where his money went because he never understood where it all went. Um, and in trying to build my business, I got deep in debt. Um, at one stage, I was £150,000, which is about $200,000 in debt, um, plus hmm. a mortgage. Um, and uh, I went out to the first Bitcoin conference. And all I wanted to say here is that... <clears throat> If you, um, some people are in situations where they feel like they can't even tell their partner about what they've done with the money and the life savings, and they feel like suicide's a better option. And those were some of the messages that I was getting. I just want people to know that there is always a way to learn and recover from these things. I've learned, I've recovered, I've made a lot of mistakes over the years. Um, and there's, you know, uh, I've released a lot of content out there on my YouTube channel on retirementplanb.com, um, to let people know that you should never be exposed to one outcome. Um, and you can rebuild, um, you will rebuild if you take a proactive approach, you just got to face, expect, you know, know where you are. Um, you know, uh, I think the, the phrase that I've always said, expect the best, but prepare for the worst, yes. know where you are. Plan where you want to go. And I'm talking long term here. Most people vastly overestimate what they can do in a year um, and completely underestimate what they can do in 10 years. And they end up, because they try and do it so fast, they end up in pump and dump scams. They end up making trading there. You know, all of the things that we've always taught. Um, what I want to say is that on my YouTube channel, once the dust settles, once I'm back, um, Rob's content, dollar cost averaging, all this stuff, learn adjust, rebuild, and put together a plan for what you're going to do for the next 10 years. It is never worth taking your life for money. My father worshipped money. My father lost all his money. Um, and, you know, his spirit lives on in me um, because those lessons that he taught me led to, you know, many of the best financial decisions that I've ever made. Um, and I just want people to know that um, whatever it is, there is a recovery and at the end of the day, um, me and my father shared a special bond. I've obsessed over the subject of money my whole life. I've written my third book on the topic. I spent two decades from investment banking to crypto to Bitcoin to everything in between. But at the end of the day, it's your relationships. It's your love that matters. We weren't talking about money in the final days. We were talking about our love, our bond. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's never worth giving up your life. It's never worth thinking that there's no recovery from this. Um, you know, you are alive at one of the most interesting and exciting times in financial history. You get to participate in, have your say in what could be one of the most interesting recoveries or a very interesting, disastrous lesson um, for everybody. But take it for what it is um, and don't let that, um, you know, don't let that take you out here. Um, there is, Bitcoin is a very important technology in everything that's happening in the world right now. Um, and don't let this, uh, you know, take you out of um, understanding there is a recovery from here. Hmm. Well said. Well said, Simon. It all comes down to purpose and family. If we have those two things, I think we'll just be okay. All right, my man. Uh, I couldn't have said it better. Let's jump into the user's questions that people uh, put forth from Slido. And I will wrap this up. And again, um, this is, before I do want Simon, that was great. That was fantastic. This is why we get along, man. Uh, because my rules that I have for myself and the things you just talk about, they align. And there's a reason why I have certain people on my channel. And there's a reason why I don't have others on my channel. 
So thanks. I do appreciate you a lot. So <laughs> let's get to these questions. Let me bring this up real quick. Okay, my man, here we go. Here's the first one. And of course, this is from uh, Slido. And we had, uh, these aren't just questions that I made up. This is from the community and then people could upvote. And here's the top ones that we got. First one, most depositors don't want compensation in fiat or company equity. We want our crypto return in kind, even if that means overtime. And I think we talked about this, but can you make this happen? It sounds like we can. Just to clarify, what do you got with this one, Simon? Yeah, if, if um, Celsius is illiquid, then we just hold out and wait. Um, if it's insolvent, then you're getting a haircut. Um, what happens to that haircut um, is either going to be a bail-in through equity. It's either going to be a bailout from some other world and invest, in which yeah. case they might want to make a predatory offer. Um, or it's going to be liquidation and TradFi solutions that may give you the worst outcome based upon the market conditions. So if it's insolvent, fine. But if it is, um, you know, uh, sorry, if it's illiquid, then fine. Wait, mm -hmm. if it's insolvent, you've got no choice. You are where you are. You've made the investment decision. Now we need to suck it up and come up with the best solution. Yeah, that's, that is uh, perfect. Unfortunately, people don't want to hear that, but that is the truth. And I think uh, you've got your options here. We just talked, and this is why we went through the history. We can go through the Mount Gox uh, way, wait eight years and still be waiting, or we go through the Bifinex way and a hybrid of, of some sort. So that would take care of the first question. Now, Azad, if you could do me a favor, fast forward to the next question that we had, or our second biggest question uh, that came up. And ooh, this is a good one. I would prefer to be patient. And I got to tell you, I'm the same way and get 100% back. Or in, in some cases, like in Bitfinex, they got even more if they invested in the security. Then demand the cryptos now and get a 30% haircut. Is the former possible option? I'm just going to say yes. Am I wrong here? Yes, we are. So, same answer. And again, patience is my preferred option. All the cryptos there, I get exactly what I put in back. And I'm happy to wait. I, you know, I'm, that, that's my fine, fine option with that. Perfect. Yeah. Um, it's whether it is an option is the question. Yeah, what is option? But, you know, like, I mean, people on my channel, I mean, they're pretty much in line with us. It's a three, five, 10 year game plan, dollar cost average for the long term. So I, I think this, this comes as no surprise to people from here. All right. Azad, next one, please. We'll go for, we'll just go down the line from the most requested and go down. So we talked about this one. But this is a good question, though. How bad is it liquidity gap insolvency and why the silence? I think that is a, that is a bigger question. People, it is unnerving. Remember when Ledger came out and they said that they had a, they had a, uh, a data leak, not a hack, a data leak, and they waited and waited and waited. I thought it was the worst thing they could have done. They should have got out in front of it. They, sh they would have no reputation damage and people wouldn't even think about it right now. It's all how you act and that's leadership. So Simon, what's going on here? Why the silence? Why do you think it is? And not that you can say what it is because you're not on the, you know, you're not privy to that information, but uh, the things that you could say might be. My speculation, um, I think with every ounce of his body, Alex would like to be saying things, um, sure. but he's scared. Um, I think he'd like to be doing the AMA. I think he'd like to be on this hot seat. Um, he won't like some of the questions, um, but unfortunately, some of the things that Alex has said over the years has also got him in trouble um, because, you know, at Bank to the Future, unfortunately, I've, I've, I've always listened to our advisors. I've taken my advisors as, as supporting me. We've had to make decisions sometimes of when you take risk, when you don't take risk. Um, but I've always respected the regulations um, because I knew that would be the thing that would unfold you or make or break you in the end. Um, there are certain things that Alex has said over the years that I don't think were right. Maybe he's learning his lessons. But I do believe that Alex, with every ounce in his body, would much rather be here on an AMA um, taking those hard questions, but he just simply can't because he's in a situation where what he says um, will be, uh, you know, have massive, massive consequences um, for either himself, the company, and his advisors will be saying, don't say anything. Um, so, you know, that's, that's just the reality. Yeah, I got to agree. I think he'd like to be here. I think he can't be here. I'm pretty sure the lawyers, if he's, I'm pretty sure he's consulting, are like, do not go on any AMAs because what you say can be used against you, so on and so forth. I think we all know that one. All right, Azad, the next one for these questions. So, this is good. Eh, 
why does Celsius keep paying rewards instead of using these funds to help bail themselves out? And I will say this, I still get the emails too. Like, hey, just so you know, you made whatever, you know, 10 bucks this week. And uh, the question is, is I think the emails go out, but it's still in the account. I'm, I don't believe you can take those out anyhow. But um, what would that be an option, Simon? You could, you could look at it and go, hey, we're not going to pay any, any of the, uh, uh, the yield out. But we're going to use that to, you know, bail ourselves out. Yeah, so my speculation, um, firstly, is uh, those yields are just database entries. They're not, there's, there's, you know, those are just increasing people's balances. Um, and it's just simply a database entry. Um, the system was built to do that every week uh, yeah. based upon certain parameters. And I believe if you look at the way Alex dealt with this one, he was fighting till the end. He was telling people things are okay right until they were, um, until the lawyer said we got to, or whoever said we've got to stop deposits. Um, now I think we're in the same scenario where he wants to pay until he can no longer. Um, but personally, I believe that you're just making the liability worse. Um, that needs to be stopped. Um, and uh, maybe it's a technical issue um, <laughs> or it's just, uh, uh, you know, um, but I don't place, place much weight on what those are. It yeah. sounds like it's the board wanting to be in business as usual and put together a recovery plan. Yeah. Um, versus uh, if you're in bankruptcy, those are just going to go. And I think there's an, my speculation is there's an internal fight there around what they should be doing. But yeah, it's to me, it's just a database entry and it's, it's, it's pretty meaningless, but it's increasing the liability. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure somebody from Celsius is uh, listening to this this uh, stream. OK, next one. Um, what's the projected, what's your projected timeline for Celsius to reach a resolution under the scenarios that have been speculated on by the public bankruptcy buyout your plan? Again, this really comes down to the three different proposals. And if they go for those proposals, what, well, Simon, I'll ask you this, how, what's the fastest resolution here that we can get to? Cause I don't see this. I don't see a resolution coming quicker than months, uh, coming on the yeah. pipe. Am I wrong here? Yeah, so Bitfinex was nine months to recovery. Um, if they started moving exactly like Bitfinex, you can imagine a nine-month scenario. Okay. Um, it, you need transparency on these contracts. There's external factors at, at force, like when does Ethereum move to proof of stake? Um, I, I, did, I was original investor in the Ethereum ICO, and they said in the ICO <laughs> paper that within one year, they would be proof of stake. Um, they're still not proof of stake. Um, so No you know, way. The, the, yeah. yeah, it was within it was the original promise is one year to proof of stake oh my um, God. in the white paper. Yeah. Okay, that's um, I'm going I'm to take that, that, sn that snippet for my next show. Great, thanks. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you know, there's external forces here. It's about understanding the assets. Um, it's, uh, you know, what is the regulatory situation? What is the financial situation? What is the recovery plan? These are decisive moves and... At best case scenario, this uh, Bitfinex was recovered in nine months. Worst case scenario, Mt. Gox is still going on after eight years. There's your choices. Okay, makes a lot of sense. Next one. How does the community get a board seat to represent an interest in the event an agreement is reached? This would be an interesting mm -hmm. speculation here. Yeah, so um, most people... Uh, most lawyers are advising people trying to leave an insolvent company as a board member. The um, taking on a board seat at Celsius is assuming all of the liability for actions that you did not take. Um, so, ah. you know, no, no lawyer advised that. Um, and my lawyer certainly didn't advise me of that. Um, whether there is an independent committee and there's a board seat, um, then... As long as, uh, you know, as long as, you know, and that's why I'd said, I think I'm better off as a, uh, an external depositor, an external shareholder than taking that internal position. Because at the end of the day, the last director is the one that holds all the bags, all the liabilities and all the responsibilities. I don't know many people that would want to take that no matter how much money is on the line. Yeah, I would, uh, I would not, I would pass on that one. And then also, uh, before we move on, uh, Simon, you are using those headphones want to make sure that the battery isn't running out. We could switch over at some point, but I want to remind it, and you can check that out as I talk about this real quick. As a reminder for voice, to have your voice heard, remember, there's a link in the description, bankthefuture.co 
forward slash Celsius. Again, just use the link. It'll tell you exactly what the proposals were that we just talked about as a refresher. Talk about your opinions, the, the actions they've taken so far. And then, hold on, is this a duplicate? Ah, hold three beliefs. Belief one, two, three. Ah, it's pretty good. I, I didn't, we didn't cover this. This is pretty interesting. We believe all attempts should be made to make depositors whole in order to maintain shareholder value. Belief number two, we believe that TradFi may seek to profit predatory lending from depositors' losses, may take too long, and may lack. And three, we believe the business as usual will not exist in the yield market in the future. I got to agree with you there. Again, make your voice heard. You get to vote. You get to be a part of this process. And for Pete's sakes, let's not let TradFi bail us out. And uh, we go from there. So uh, make your voices heard. All right. Simon, how are we doing on the battery life? We doing okay? Or Yeah, I think it's still saying 20% because I'm charging at the same time as it and draining down. So I'll carry ah, on good. until... Yeah, I'll carry on until you're ready to go or we lose it back or we lose it. All. Nice. Okay. There's now a next big question. How will treatment of assets in one earn account, two loan collateral, and three custody account differ, if at all, in the various possible scenarios? Because um, if you're not... This was a United States issue, I believe. Uh, if you weren't a credit investor after April 15th, you got put into uh, what was an earn account or a, an earn account after or before April 15th. And then you could, you could transfer it over to a custody account if you wanted to. Or if you weren't a, a credit investor past April 15th, everything would just be in custody. And that was just one of the, one of the uh, provisions that they dealt with as they were talking with different regulators. So as you have... So I don't know if Simon can answer this because if you have an earn account, that's a different thing as it earns or in a custody type of account. I don't think it's going to make a difference as far as speed of getting our, our funds back, especially with these provisions. Uh, Simon, am I wrong there? Yes. Yeah, so this is more of a lawyer question. Um, yeah. And this is the type of question I'd ask my lawyer, but um, I, I'm, these are very, these terms should not be thrown away, you know, thrown around lightly. So, you know, at Banks of the Future, we're, we're a securities business. Um, mm -hmm. We're applying for a virtual asset service provider custody license, an investment banking license, and a retail securities license. Um, just saying something is a custody solution um, has real meaning. So, you know, this is why these terms shouldn't be thrown around loosely. Um, you know, custody means that those assets are, you know, put in some kind of trust account and they're legally segregated um, from other assets, they can't be invested. Um, and so, you know, this is yeah. the unwinding process of, uh, these are very important questions and these are very lawyer nuancey questions. Um, if you call something custody, it needs to be treated as custody. If you are leveraging people's assets, it needs to be treated as a bank. If it's an investment, it needs to be treated as a security. Mm -hmm. um, if it's interest, then, you know, these are very, important questions and these terms should not be thrown around loosely and they all have different legal implications just like depositors would be considered creditors debt normally supersedes equity and um, tokens have no rights you know these are very important lessons that you've got to become a lot wiser investor when you understand the difference between you know why i'm an equity investor why i not versus investing in tokens and, and various other things so let's take the education out of this there's going to be a lot of learnings and it will make you a better investor but, you know, I can't give you legal advice on that. These are lawyer questions. Yeah, but it's still a good answer. It's a, it all comes down to education and just making the best decision for you. Next one. Azad, if you would be so kind. Thank you. Please explain how Celsius can prevent a bank run if it opens withdrawals. And this would be a pretty good scenario. So we get everything out and we start to open. But there's no way they could open everything up and go, okay, now we're ready for business. It would have to be a slow process. Yeah, so they, they, they need to say, <coughs> oh, excuse me, my voice is going now. Let me get some water. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Take your time. We got time. Oh, my passion is bigger than my uh, voice at the moment. <clears throat> yeah, man. Um, so the, yeah, so this is a, a risk management question. It's um, what assets are liquid? And then yeah. you open up withdrawals for those amount. Um, this is just a, a number crunching game. It requires taking step of what the financial situation is um, and releasing withdrawals based upon the maximum exposure of what is liquid and what's um, invested, what's uninvested. Mm -hmm. um, and so unwind, unwind the position, have it as liquid, uh, liquid, and then allow take the maximum exposure, allow withdrawals to open, um, and then 
when the next position comes through um, and you gradually do it that way. Yeah. Percentages. It has to be percentages. There's no way they can open everything. And go, okay. You know, have fun. It's just not going to work like that. But I will say this from the, from the message that I got recently, the big thing was, I don't care if I have to wait. I don't care if they don't pay me yield. I just want my life savings back at some point. And I got to tell you, uh, I think this is one of those paths to go forward. All right. So next one. In the Bitfinex video that you shared, have shared, some depositors lost 25% of their assets with your counsel. Do you expect a similar outcome for Celsius depositors if we go for this type of uh, recovery plan over here? Yeah, so the reason that I love the Bitfinex scenario is because it was very free market driven. Um, right. If you, if you wanted to take a loss, you could. If you just said, get me the hell out, I want to recover, um, you would have made a little loss. Those that wanted to profit from that speculation were able to profit from that speculation. Um, and those that just hodled all the way made the most amount of money. Um, and so yeah. I'm not saying that will happen again. Um, but the choice between dumping a token, um, converting to equity, um, trying to recover what you may have lost by buying tokens cheaper, um, or just holding off on the debt. Um, those are all decisions and you can diversify accordingly. You could say, I want 33% of my risk here, 33 there, 33 there. Um, and you can play a risk management game accordingly. But the, the reason that I like that solution is because there's a big problem in making decisions for people. Um, if you make those decisions wrong, you're legally liable for those. But right. if you allow people to make their own decisions, um, while they may not be happy with the situation, they made their own decisions and with hindsight, they can learn. Yeah, I learned. I mean, look, I learned the hard way in 2017 when I went in heavy, when uh, John McAfee told me Bitcoin was going to a million. I couldn't believe he'd lie to me. So, you know, all it took was just a little bit of time, a dollar cost averaging. But that was just my plan. It doesn't work for every everybody, but uh, dollar cost average, that's what we got. So next one. In the event of bankruptcy, which eh, would be, I think, one of the worst case scenarios, in the event of bankruptcy, what creditors and dollar amounts stand in line ahead of the depositors? Who gets paid first? Will shareholders get anything if the depositors are not made whole? See, this is a question I'm not sure we can get into because this will be, it depends on, you know, uh, how this all plays out. But anything with this one, Simon? Yeah. Um, so again, a lawyer question, and I'm not a lawyer, yeah. um, but from, from experience, it would seem to me, um, maybe, uh, <laughs> that uh, depositors and creditors would become before shareholders um, and shareholders would become before token holders. Um, and so really, if you go down that line, um, this is why my, my you know, hashtag depositors first is, yeah. let's see if we can make depositors whole. If we can, then there's probably some shareholder value. And if there's some shareholder value, then the company may be able to do something with the token. Gotcha. Um, yeah. That makes sense. Now, this one, this one's interesting. This is just theories, unfortunately. Why do you believe other CFI platforms, like a BlockFi, like an, a Voyager, ever seen backing for liquidity from the likes of FTX or Alameda Research, but Celsius is struggling to find the same support? Why isn't there uh, internal bailouts being offered this way? And this, is, this would just be speculation. Nobody has any idea exactly why that is. But any comments on this one that you can say, Simon? Yeah, I am privy to lots of behind the scenes conversations. Uh, motivations are driven by many different factors. Uh -huh. um, you know, um, and my speculation on this, if is that I think Alex is in AMAs used a strategy of getting one up on the competition by slagging off the competition. Hmm. Um, yeah. I think that's coming back to Biden. Um, I personally have tried to make as little enemies over my time, but just in the day to day of doing business, sometimes you can't help make enemies. Um, but I do think Alex was particularly antagonistic and there's um, certain enemies that were made. There is also conspiracy theories um, that at the end of the day, just follow the money. Um, I'm writing my new book on money yeah. and all I'm doing is following the money around the world, the IMF and all these different flows. And you can figure out the answers to crimes, wars, everything. Um, and that is what I was doing. My whole book is on following the money to just kind of unwind the last um, few 5,000 years of monetary history to predict the future. Um, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, three hours, three, um, three AC, you know, blew up. 
um, Luna blew up. Yeah. Decisions were made. Certain packs were formed. Yeah. Some people decided to um, break those packs. And the politics of those decisions would have formed alliances and not alliances. Um, and whether Alex made the right decisions or wrong decisions is very hard to know at the time. Um, he may have been trying to protect his depositors and get Luna out as fast true. as possible. True, true, true. Um, he, he may have actually broken a pact, which then led to a coordinated attack and speculative tools and all sorts of stuff. You, you create your conspiracy theories. Um, and they're very interesting and follow the, you know, follow the money and you can get a lot of answers. And that's the beauty of blockchain. There's a lot of answers there. Um, and the whole community given those answers, um, you know, we can speculate on those, but here's my thing. I just said, I don't give a shit about any of that. I yeah. don't care about short squeezes. I don't care about trading. That's not my game. You guys play that game. Yeah. We need to move fast. Here's solutions. Here's what I can do. Here's the influence that I have. Here's what I would do if it was me. Do you want to do it? If you're not going to do it, here's another plan. And we need to, you know, um, if, if that's not working, then we'll carry on till the end until something does work. And if the end is we lose all our money, Goldman Sachs owns everything, um, then we come back to tell the story um, and uh, everybody, uh, you know, learns and karma plays its role. Um, pe there's consequences to everybody's actions. And hopefully everybody did things with the best intent. Um, and that will be the price that they pay in the end. Sweet, Mary Joseph. Do not let... DeFi, or excuse me, uh, TradFi, bail us out. Oof. Okay, next one is odd. We'll move a little bit uh, farther down the line as we get these questions up. Let's see. A little delay, sorry. But let me bring this down. Oh, how about I just pull this up? Okay. Oh, this is good. You stated that you would reach out to CZ uh, from Binance, CEO of Binance. What can you say about that interaction, if anything, and the, potenti and the potentiality for Binance to assist Celsius with liquidity? Is that anything that's uh, come down the pipe and you guys have talked about? Or can you even talk about that? Um, conversations have been had. There's things that are happening that I can't talk about. Um, that's all I can say. Yeah. I'm not going to push that question. But I know the answer. All right, we'll get to the next one. Azad, next one, please. Perfect. Are Celsius International customers, Middle East, treated as US, Euro, UK citizens in their bankruptcy restructure claims? So again, I don't think this will be a lawyer question again, uh, and th if this even goes down to, uh, to that, that bankruptcy option. I personally think that's the worst option, but uh, Simon, anything on this one? Um, yeah, I don't know the answer, lawyer yeah. question, um, but in most, in most companies, including Bank to the Future, U.S. and non-U.S. are treated slightly differently yeah. um, in order to comply with U.S. securities laws, which is the current empire that's backed by the most military expenditure and therefore has the most power mm -hmm. and often comes up with the most mafia-like solutions when regulating. That sounds like a country I know. Hey, when is that book coming out? <laughs> That you just talked about. I promised to get it out by the end of the year, but um, this really set me back. I, I was, I'm, I'm writing the book. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to talk, you know, to talk about my book, but it's the most exciting book I've, I've written. Um, I'm, I've learned a lot just through writing this book, um, and I think uh, following the money is going to educate a lot of people on a lot of things that are very confusing to a lot of people at the moment. Um, and my book a decade ago did get a lot of things right. Um, yeah. And I think we can look at the next decade as well. All I can say, Simon, is uh, stay safe until you can come back on the show and talk about the book. All right. So next question. Do you believe Celsius will be liquidated on any of its current loans? Does it have the assets to add collateral if necessary? And, uh, you know, I've, I've had loans myself uh, that have been liquidated from Celsius themselves. But uh, what about the Celsius loans as far as liquidation? I, I guess it would, it would come down to you know, how they want to start restructuring, I believe. Simon, what do you got? Yeah, th these are all finance questions. If I was privy to the finances, I could probably answer those questions. Um, yeah. A lot of people are doing amazing analysis, looking at the blockchain, understanding, you know, I'm learning from the community that are, uh, uh, you know, that are releasing um, addresses and stuff. I'm learning from you just as much as you're learning from me. So this is a community effort. You know, there's no way that I can keep up with this at the pace at which it's moving. 
if it wasn't for Twitter and everybody doing their own due diligence and their own skill set. And that's what I encourage everybody to do. If you have a particular skill set, um, then apply it to whatever it is, your solution, whether it's, you know, whatever your solution is, whatever value that you can bring, bring it to the table. It's adding value. There's certain things that I just simply do not have the time to look at. And I'm seeing some amazing analysis from the community um, that are reverse engineering blockchains and all yeah. sorts of stuff and educating me at the same time um, so that we, can, we all have better information. At yeah. the same time, there are people that are using information as a weapon mm -hmm. in order to serve other agendas. So we also have to be hyper aware that there is fake news out there. There are competing agendas. Right. Um, and a lot of people are taking advantage of these situations. The reason I wanted to go live is that, you know, at least make an opinion about me. You either think I'm, I'm here <laughs> predatory, um, yeah. trying to, you know, and, and you're entitled to that view, but I wanted to come on camera. At least you can have an opinion about whether I'm here for the right reasons or the wrong reasons. I'm just saying it as it is my current situation. Um, and, uh, I'm trying to protect my deposits, protect my shareholding. Um, and uh, I'm trying to use my influence to do what I think is right. I may get it wrong, um, but I just want to add value in the way that I can, and you should do the same. Perfect. Sounds good. Sounds great. So let's go to, and then, of course, remember, everybody, if you want to have your voice heard and talk about, because Simon just told you, I mean, there's some great, smart people out there. Give us your, your information or your uh, thoughts on this whole process. Again, link in the description at bank bnk to the future.com forward slash celsius link in the description all right so next one and this is well you've already talked about this has anyone yeah, sorry i just wanted to say i just want to say a few things on um, web domains um if yeah. you go to the bank to the future terms and conditions um we have bank to the future.com bank to the future.com and bank to the future.co but uh, okay. there's going to be there's going to be a bunch of people creating phishing sites um, if you go to the terms and conditions, we list all of the domains that are official um, on banktothefuture.com. Um, unfortunately, it's very confusing because um, bank is a sensitive word. Um, and so uh, over our time, um, we've had to make changes. Um, and so, but just go to the terms and conditions and you can find the list of the domains that are official because there's going to be a bunch of scammers that are going to try and, um, you know, scam you and create all sorts of weird websites. We have people create fake websites of us all the time. So I just wanted to say that. Yeah. Or you know what? Make it even, this is what I tell people. Don't do like a Google search and thing like that, bank to the future, because that's when the phishing sites come up. Just go to people that uh, you hopefully trust. And that would be somebody like myself in on the YouTube channel. Let me bring something up. Hold on. This is the best, best way to do stuff. Uh, let's take this one. Sure. Whoa. So if you go to any of my videos, any of them, scroll all the way down. There's these people that I watch all the time, YouTube channel recommendations, and there's Simon Dixon. If you click on Simon Dixon's YouTube, you can find all the links that you want to know to his Twitter account, to Bank of the Future, and everything else. So just follow uh, the easy parts. Also, there's a link in the description that I have Bank of the Future and also his, uh, his Twitter account. So hopefully that makes sense. All right. So I think we talked about this. Already. Why do you believe that Celsius has been so quiet? Silence has already broken the trust community. Was it worth it? I think we know the answer to that one. Next one. Uh, again, I think this is a banking question. Could pausing rewards for all users help Celsius use that money to further pay down off the positions, reducing exposure, prevent liquidations? That would be a financial question, perhaps. Anything with that one? Yeah, I mean, I, I'd stop. I'd, if it were me, I'd stop rewards right away. Yeah. And then uh, Azad, next one. And, it's, and uh, Azad pulls new ones. I want to pull one from the comments as well. This, I think we talked about, we can only speculate, right? We can't say anything because we don't know. Do you believe that Celsius was attacked by bad actors or mismanaged or both? I will tell you this. I've never seen so much FUD and so much uh, polarizing views come out than Celsius on, especially on Twitter. Simon, did you see the same things or different? Yeah, I think, I think both, right? Um, you're easy to attack if you've, done, if you've got something to hide and every business has got something to hide, right? Um, 
you know, every no business has done anything perfectly. Um, that's yeah. just a fact. I'm a shareholder in 100 of them and everybody's got dirty washing. And so do you and everyone that's washing, watching this um, has got something that they've done wrong, that they're trying to learn and they're trying to recover from. Um, but the reality is, is that I believe that both has happened. I think Celsius have done some things wrong. And I think um, competition and bad actors have tried to expose that. Um, and, and I think both is happening. Got to agree. Okay, next one. Why do you believe Celsius has decided to remain quiet? I think we talked about that already. Right. Next one. What's some, have you got a live chat at the same time, Rob, as well? Or yeah, I you, do. Are we live on YouTube at the same time? What's, yes, the, what's the live chat like? Is it going crazy? <laughs> we've only got about 4,000 people or so. But uh, oh, shit. so we've got, so this is from my man, First Coast Crypto. He said, wait a minute. Rob said never trust anyone. Exactly. Everything's a scam until proven otherwise. So don't even trust me. And even don't even trust Simon. Everything that we talk about, you have to verify yourself. And I think if you do stuff like that, you'll be in a much better position because then everything's a scam. Even your mom texts you and said, what's your Coinbase password? It's a scam. So just go from there. I think you'll be okay. And we got uh, this one from CKJs. Hope some of y'all <laughs> learned your lesson. Those crazy high yields aren't sustainable. I think it, what Simon talked about, it comes down to education. And uh, this is one of those things where, Simon, I had to tell you something. Uh, it really came down to what you said there where you said peer-to-peer. And you talked about, you go, look, if you're taking Bitcoin and you give it to somebody and they, you know, they rehypothecate and they can loan it out, that's one thing. But if you're doing fractionalized shares without collateralization, uh, that's fractionalized lending, essentially. And that's not what we signed up for. But, you know, here we are, if that is essentially what it is. I think that's, that there's a big distinction there. Uh, let's take a look here. Also, get off the centralized exchanges, use DEXs instead. All right. Any other questions we have? How long before we hear from the board? Again, that's a, that could take a while, and I think Simon's already talked about that. What do we have over here? When Lambo? That's a good question, Simon. When, it, <laughs> when are we going to get that Lambo? Um, I tell you what, if you put together a 10-year plan, um, I actually believe that um, anybody can have a Lambo. Um, if you try and get it within one year, I guarantee you you're going to get scammed. You're going to trade. You're going to make tax mistakes. You're going to create liabilities. Um, and you're going to try and get it too fast. And I know people that have got a Lambo within one year um, and that can't afford a Lambo during the crash. Um, <laughs> and so if you, if, you want a, if you want a Lambo, I've got no problem with that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, it's, uh, but put together a longer term plan um, and be prepared for all outcomes. And I've always said, be ready for inflation, be ready for deflation, ready for economic growth, be ready for economic decline, be ready for a war, be ready for a pandemic, um, be ready for a bank failure and financial crisis, be ready mm -hmm. for real estate crashes, be ready for stock market crashes, be ready for Bitcoin crashes, be ready to, to you know, take advantage of the wider crypto markets. Yeah. Um, and this is really you know, uh, making sure that you're ready for outcome. And then you can relax. You don't need to do, you know, there's a lot of people that aren't relaxing right now because they, they said, I'm putting everything in Celsius. And I'm not here to rub your face in that. That really is not my intention. I've yeah. made bad, you know, some, sometimes kicking someone when they're down um, is the worst thing. And I wish, uh, you know, I'm conflicted with these things. Sometimes I just wish that people could be more empathic. But at the same time, um, it's, uh, you know, this ruthless accountability that's also made the crypto market and Bitcoin what it is today um, because we're ruthlessly holding um, accountability here. Um, I don't know the answers to that, but, uh, you know, somewhere in the middle, um, there is your what feels right. Um, and I, I really hope that people learn from this. Yeah. But it still just doesn't feel right to me to say, well, you should have you shouldn't have done that. Um, of course, you shouldn't have done that. That's obvious right now. Every people are suffering. Um, if, if everybody knew what to do, then they would have started mining Bitcoin on a laptop. Um, <laughs> then they would have converted it all to the Ethereum ICO. And yeah. then before the crash, they would have uh, put it in Tether. And then they would have taken all of their Tethers and buy Binance tokens. Um, and then they would have taken their Binance tokens and they would have bought Bitcoin. You know, yeah. And then you'd be a trillionaire, okay? And you'd own the whole thing. You don't know. Um, yeah. That's, uh, that's a great one. I'm going to use that one. I'm going to steal that. Simon, before we go on, tell us about what it was like in 2000, because you got it in 2010, right? 
2010, 2011, Bitcoin, trying to, you know, start up your own bank. What was it like back then to like, just to get a Bitcoin? I mean, how did you, I mean, it's got to be. Yeah, well, I, I spent, I spent in, in the first, um, in the first uh, Bitcoin conference, I spent a Bitcoin on a Mars bar. Get um, out of here. At a hat at a hacked together um, ATM machine that um, we will, we actually, after the Bitcoin con a special code to go to a hackathon um, and you had to go all around Czech Republic and these really shady things that I can only describe as crack dens. <laughs> um, and eventually, eventually, if you did a secret knock and got the right text message, you ended up in this hackathon um, and there was a bunch of people with anonymous masks and a Bitcoin ATM where they were selling Mars bars um, and I thought it would be fun to buy a Mars bar on this Bitcoin ATM. Unbelievable. Um, and, uh, you know, this is the, the post-conference because that's what the community was back then. It was us versus the banks. Um, it was a movement towards providing financial freedom that we were very, we knew we were going to be attacked in, in really big ways. And it just felt like this insurmountable task, but um, we accidentally succeeded and, and, and Bitcoin was created. Um, but yeah, buying Bitcoins back then was a disaster. I mean, you know, I, I bought some Casasius coins. What's that? Um, and I had these 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 physical Bitcoins um, mm. that you often see as the yeah um, yeah. It had five it had five Bitcoins in this physical Bitcoin with a hologram on the back. No way. Um, and quite frankly, Mount Gox was just the easiest place to store your Bitcoin, and then you had to figure out how to download these wallets. You'd had you know very few, and then Mike Hearn started creating the first apps. Um, you know, the Bitcoin wallet and then Apple banned all apps and said, you're not supporting this. And, you know, it was a nightmare. Um, it was really, really hard. And what you got today is really luxury um, compared to what we had back then. And then oh. you have paper wallets instead of hardware wallets. Um, yeah, that's at the first right. Bitcoin, at the first Bitcoin conference, um, you know, Trezor was there and they were actually yeah. sponsoring the conference and they were trying to create this hardware wallet. And that was, you know, a a major, major breakthrough when that came out. Did 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 everybody call it uh, a scam? Like, oh, they're trying to steal my Bitcoin. This hardware wall. Oh, yeah, every, sense. yeah, and uh, you know, and that is the default position, right? Everything's a scam until proven otherwise, and because everyone wants your private key, and uh, eventually, uh, eventually, yeah, of course, it was a scam. Of course. So you know, you know what? I mean, just we'll, we'll get to the questions in a second, but think of it this way: like you talked about Bitfinex and the actual. Uh, you know, what was it, 70, 80 million? And it was like the biggest hack of all time at that point. And of course, Mt. Gox uh, before that, but Bitfinex was this big thing. And now today we're talking about with Celsius, what, 8 billion, 10 billion or somewhere that, that's, uh, that's just sitting there. What's going to happen in like the next five, 10 years? People are going to watch this video and they'll be like, can you believe that? They're talking about just $10 billion when we're at a multi- you know, 12, and, and I can't say what, what, what it's going to be, but I will just remind everybody, if you take a look at all the world's uh, money and markets and the visualization, this, this was just a year ago. And all these little squares are $100 billion. $100 billion. Here's military spending, U.S. budgets, coins and banknotes. Fed's balance sheet, I can tell you that right now, that's way higher. Here's all the billionaires in the world, Zuckerberg, Bezos, Gates. I don't know about Zuckerberg anymore. Gold is 12, 12 trillion now, Fortune 500. Stock markets is 100 trillion. The money supply, over 100 trillion. Global debt, 200 trillion. Uh, global real estate, 280 trillion. And then you got derivatives, which is one quadrillion, which is a real number. I actually had to look that up. So if you take a look at all these things and we're, say, and we're saying to yourself, man, we're at a, what are we at, $900 billion uh, with what's going on. This in five years, I personally think, isn't going to be uh, much. All right. That's my little rant. Let's yeah, one, one thing I'd encourage, if you put in yeah. YouTube, Simon Dixon TEDx. Um, yeah. I gave two TEDx talks. The first one um, was where I was trying to, it was during 2007. There was one where I was in Occupy London or something like that. Huh. Um, and uh, I was trying to describe to people these bailouts and the difference between, you know, um, a million, a billion and a trillion in time. Um, and I remember we were talking about RBS having this 23 million pound hole. Yeah, it's the second one. Um, the first right. one was came later. Okay. Um, Ten years ago. Tw yeah, in two in 2000. <laughs> there you go. Some of these videos. Look at that good-looking younger slimmer. <laughs> um, Look at that skinny kid. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, shit, what happens then? <laughs> Bitcoin, <laughs> big, Bitcoin happens. Um, 
And um, yeah, this 23 million pound hole in Royal Bank of Scotland, which seemed like the biggest number in the world. Hmm. Um, you know, and these are just like normal hacks in the smart contract now. It's crazy how these, how these numbers escalate. We have just the finance. We have lost all touch from reality, um, and you know, uh, the, it, it's it's just crazy. You know, um, we, this is why I say we are alive at the most interesting time. Um, it's really harmful for many. It's it's going to be really great for others, um, and you just got to get on the right side of this shit uh, because we need we need people that understand this stuff, um, and Bitcoin hugely progressed the conversation. I used to, I went to London School of Economics back in the day before Bitcoin. And yeah. I tried to tell people that banks created money. They chucked me out of the university for giving such a stupid talk. When mm. I said, when I was trying to describe the banks create money. Um, I remember oh. like even Burt, Be you know, I, I used to, I went to the Independent Commission on Banking where Sir John Vickers was presenting his finding on the 2007 financial crisis. And I was trying to explain, it's quite tragic, actually. There was an MP in the UK that recently died, died called uh, David Davies. He was actually murdered um, very mm. tragically. Um, but he was the, you know, the gov the, in charge of the whole banking um, in the UK politics. And none of these people understood banking. They thought I was crazy when I was explaining um, how money works. Um, and when Bitcoin came along, it was like, yeah, I mean, it's obvious that banks create money. And now this conversation's... The education that we have um, 10 years on is quite remarkable how, how well-educated people are on the financial system. Back, back in these days, this was hard. And if Celsius gives everyone a good education, I'm really sorry. You know, I don't want to tell you, I, I know these numbers are big. Um, you've got to recover from these. You've got to take forward. You've got to progressively rebuild. Um, you can rebuild. And you've got to learn the lessons from that, no matter what happens. And I'll fight tooth and nail to try and get the best solution that I can for my deposits. And hopefully that helps your deposits. Yeah, hopefully so. All right. Well said. And I, um, let's, here's, some, here's something to be aware of for everybody. Uh, scams. And this is Max Anderson. Thank you for a video. I, compl I agree completely with everything you said. I have become so rich after giving all my crypto to Scammer Sam. She has doubled my Bitcoins and tripled my Ethereums. Just letting you know, that's a scam. Uh, so if you're seeing stuff like this, this is ridiculous. Which leads me to the point I'd like to talk about real quick, which is over here, this question. I'm not sure if this is what it is, but is the HODL request legitimate from Celsius? If it helped, I would do it, but I'm not without confirmation. First of all, is this going around that Celsius is sending out emails or something to people to put on HODL status? The next question is, can you even get into your app? And the third question is, why would it even be a HODL status when that's essentially what's going on? You can't remove it anyhow. So I would just say that this is a maybe a phishing attack or I, I'm not even sure if this is a scam. But again, treat everything like a scam until proven otherwise. Just want to make that point. So, yeah, so there's um, there's speculation um, that by turning on HODL mode within your app, you're voting for what I believe to be the internal conflicts between what the board may want versus what TradFi may want. Um, I don't know this to be true, but I have a pretty good source that this may have been, um, you know, you've got to you got to read between the lines a lot here right now when when things can't be said. You've got to kind of imagine you're in that scenario and you're, you're watching these videos. You know, Alex is watching this video and, and it breaks his heart that he can't be here. Oh, I'm sure. Um, is, my, is my guess. Um, you know, I think he placed a lot of emphasis on his re reputation, um, you know, and, you know, um, he's watching these things and he's trying to get certain messages out there that may be an internal conflict that he's not allowed to. It's going to get him in legal trouble. You know, these are tricky situations to be in. I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to say whether, you know, you want to empathize with him or not. Um, I'm just trying to say these are the realities. And, um, and I do believe that apparently this putting on hold mode is some kind of signal. Um, and uh, whether that's true or not, I don't know. But um, I've got it from a good source that that might have been a message that um, was trying to get out without saying anything and making an official announcement. Oh, there you go. Information from Simon. But don't trust Simon. Do your own research. 
All right. Yeah, and and also I just got to disclaim, you know, whether you turn hodl mode on or not, I don't know whether that's going to be a legal complication later. Um, so I'm not your lawyer. I'm not taking advice. This may cause loss if you know I'm just sharing something. Um, and you know, there's legal consequences to all of these decisions. Why? Which is why you got to be very very careful. It might change the, you know, the classification of whether someone that has hodl mode or not might. I'm not saying it does. But it might legally be used as an argument as to one why one creditor should get something over another creditor. So be ultra careful with these things. Yeah, um, and oh. you know you've got to get your own advice at the end of the day. Ah, uh, yes, perfect. Uh, here's a question that just came in from the chats. I'll go to the uh, slide on a bit. Uh, question: Can you use the Celsius token from Treasury for Simon's uh, option number one? And if we take a look at real quick, polls number one. What we're talking about here uh, is a restriction to relaunch Celsius and allow depositors to benefit from recovery through financial engineering involves risks and full recovery of funds, I guarantee. Um, Simon, can we use Celsius token? And another thing is, is I was always under the, we, we did a video a while ago as the Celsius token, I thought, and we did a video on it. We took a look at the SEC filing. It was registered as a security itself. Am I off there? Okay, two questions. Um, firstly, um, I would, if it were up to me, I would be very reluctant to use sell token um, as part of the recovery plan. And the reason for that is because if there is a token, and you may not need a token, um, if there is a token, then it should be a security that represents debt and convertible into equity um, is, is how I would suggest. And if you do that, you would make that token a security. And if that token is a security, then it cannot be listed on any exchange that is a cryptocurrency exchange that is not authorized in order to train securities, which is pretty much everyone, okay? So when people are asking for tokens to have burns and things, you're taking extreme risks. Um, and this has been a bee in the bonnet that I've tried to share with people since before the 2017 that when you're turning these things into securities, it only really works for exchanges that are willing to list that token on their own exchange because they're highly likely to be securities when you turn them into investment products like this. So I would be very skeptical um, against doing that. Now, in terms of shedding more light on my understanding of the, the, the token sale, um, there is an exemption from regulations called um, doing um, selling an investment, all right, so when you sell a token, you can't allow the token to be a security because otherwise yeah. it can't be traded on a cryptocurrency exchange. Mm -hmm. But you can sell an investment contract that gives you entitlement to that token. So um, during the 2017 um, ICO um, boom, we almost got disrupted because nobody was selling equity and everyone was buying tokens. And we created a way to compliantly sell tokens by through using a security that gave you entitlement to the token. So the token wasn't a security, but the contract that you invested in. Mm. And then once you have a contract you can invest in, you can use certain exemptions. For example, Reg D allows you to sell it to accredited investors, not by getting approved, um, but by forming, by filing a form disclosing that you're selling it to accredited investors only. And this is a little play on, you know, careful. Yeah. Um, approved means that if it was a Reg A plus, for example, you then give it to the SEC and they have to go through your prospectus, your disclosures, and no ICO was getting approved. There was only about two or three of them a lot later um, that managed to get through that. That's different from saying that you're only going to sell it to accredited investors and filing a Form D. That's not an approval. That's a disclosure to the SEC that you're doing it. So, you know, you've got to be careful around how these languages are thrown around. And this is exactly why investor protections exist. Because, you know, when you're using language to make people think a certain protection is there when it's not, um, you know, you, 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 need, you know, it's, 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 it's really questionable saying these things. Yeah, gotcha. And then uh, just an update from the question for, for Pojack. I, turn on, I turned on HODL mode the other night on the app. It sends a message to the board. I guess it'd just be like a signaling like we talked about. Okay, got it. And then moving back over to Slido. Uh, Nexo's buying out Celsius loans seemed like the perfect outcome for customers. Would we have all gotten our money back if Celsius accepted the offer? So let's say they didn't go this way. They went with, uh, I guess, Nexo if they had that liquidity. Um, what do you have to say about this one? 
Um, I'm under NDA with three different parties on that one. Gotcha. Okay. That does make sense. Azad, next one, please. Uh, how would your plan convert debt into equity for non-accredited investors? What options are available? So if we're talking about securities and things like that, how would that work, especially in the U.S.? This is a very tricky question, especially the United States and the SEC coming down with regulatory issues. Uh, yeah, so at Bank to the Future, we can only work with high net worth investors, accredited investors. Um, we're applying for additional licenses um, in order to uh, work with non-accredited, non-high net worth. Um, so there are two different options. One is that Bank to the Future has partners that are deeply integrated into our platform. Um, that we could um, make sure that we get a certain structure that would comply with the regulations. You may not get all the same options as a high net worth or accredited investor. Um, and uh, if in the future we secure those licenses, we can make different options available on our secondary markets and various other things. Um, and or it can be that certain options are available to certain classifications of investors. Um, these are all design decisions that could be um, put into the system. And then the high net worth investors could uh, be able to, uh, you know, take options for those that can't participate in certain securities offerings. Um, this is where, you know, Bank to the Future, we, we, for over a decade, we've integrated our identity system with securities laws all around the world. And this is kind of where we shine. We, we, we built technology for all different securities in all different jurisdictions. Um, but there would be certain people that could, certain people that can't, and those are based upon the law. And where you can't, um, then we integrate with different brokers that can, um, is, is the answer. Gotcha. Okay. So remember the three proposals, restructuring, proposal number two, pool the most influential whales. Number three, operational plan allows a new entity to rebuild essentially the board of Celsius. So again, uh, make your voices heard on the link in the description, bankthefuture.com forward slash Celsius or BNK to the future. All right. Next cue. Uh, ba, 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 ba. How would your plan convert debt into equity? Oh, no, we already talked about this. Is that That's the same one, eh? Yeah, same one, eh? And as we're going through that, well, I guess that'd be it. Is there a plan so small investors can get all their crypto back, for example? Users with less than a Bitcoin can get it all back in Bitcoin as opposed to equity. Again, this, I guess, will be just the different proposal that uh, comes forward. Yeah, um, you know, you, you want to treat everybody um, the same. Um, so whether you're a high net worth or not, and then if you would have certain options that are available to those that can compliantly take those options. Gotcha. And then someone just said, someone who said that Celsius, where are we? Someone said, oh, Celsius put on an update. I was like, okay. So I took a look at their Twitter account, and this is operating with your entire community and all clients in mind. We continue to take steps to preserve our protect assets and explore the options. Okay. This is going to say the same thing, I'm pretty sure. That's a new one live as we're speaking. As we're speaking. June, is that June 30th? June 30th. Yeah, that's today. Uh, we continue to take important steps. Our relationship in the community, that's it. Really what it says is across sales is we're focusing on working in order to be in a position to share more information. We are operating with the entire community and all clients. We continue to take important steps. These options include pursuing strategic transactions as well as a restructuring of our liabilities among other avenues. These exhaustive explorations are complex and take time. We want the community to know that our teams are working with experts from many different disciplines. Our relationship with the community and our clients has been a source of pride for all team members at Celsius. We will continue to share information with our customers. That's pretty much long and the short of it. Okay. Yeah, don't, and don't expect anything more until um, there is a conclusive plan that's voted upon by the board. And this is where, you know, at, at Bank to the Future, we do own over 5% of Celsius. Um, and don't take this as legal advice, but my lawyers have told me that um, that gives you a statutory right in order to call a shareholder meeting. Um, mm -hmm. And so once we've got all the feedback in and we understand how the community wants to take this, um, we do have the right to call a shareholder meeting and we do have relationships, for example, with other shareholders. So um, 
we did the Bitfinex recovery plan. We were a shareholder in Bitfinex. Um, Tether is an investor. Um, so we could pull our vote as well. And so this is why I'm trying to get creative yeah. around using the, the influence that we have in order to make sure that um, the crypto solutions get a fair vote next to the TradFi solutions. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of legal gymnastics in that. And so, you know, because we're in a unique position, that's why I'm here and that's why we're doing this. Um, and, and that's why we want to hear from you. Yeah, that's it. And then I'm looking through, we're seeing a lot of the same questions over, but we've already answered most of these. Like, do you have a timeline for an apologies yeah. to withdraw? We don't, this all comes down to the proposals, which one gets taken up first. Are you in active discussions with Celsius? How are they going to work with Bank of the Future? I think we already talked about this. There's some ongoing discussions, but you have, so you've signed an NDA already, so you can't really discuss it. Non-disclosure agreements. Let's take a look at the next one. Maybe that's it. Yeah, we are coming up on we are coming up in two hours. Wow, is that what we done? Okay. Yeah, and and you didn't even I mean, your voice didn't crack after that first uh, lozenge. Amazing. Yeah, I tend I tend to I don't. There's something about um, disaster in an industry that I deeply care about that tends to pull me into um, a lot of energy. Um, and uh, yeah, so you know. Uh, I feel we have certain purposes in life and I feel like um, doing what I can in order to um, support Bitcoin's growth. Um, yeah. Remember, these are all cycles. Um, we have recovered from all of these cycles and you are either going to participate in those recoveries or you're not going to participate in those recoveries. Um, and uh, you need to make a, a, a real decision about um, how you react from here. Um, and I am very empathic for people that um, have really got in beyond what they thought they were getting into. We've seen, uh, you know, we've seen scams after scams after scams and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. We've seen people that have just got themselves in positions that they never imagined. Um, sometimes you end up in a scam accidentally. Sometimes yeah. Matt Gox just bought an exchange off the founder of Ripple that had 80,000 Bitcoin missing that wasn't disclosed to them and accidentally mm. ended up in a Ponzi scheme. Um, you know, this is the, this is the world that, that we live in today. Um, and this is the game. And so the only way you can protect yourself is with effective diversification um, to protect from scenarios that you can't imagine this happen. And there's always surprises um, in this market. And that's just comes with part of the territory of reinventing the future of finance and providing an exit from traditional finance, which is one of the most powerful vested interests in crony capitalism, um, you know, deeply entrenched in some of the biggest interests in military and government that the world has ever seen. And if you think that they're just going to stand by and watch us um, without having incredible bumps in the roadmap and uh, speculative attacks and all sorts of stuff, then you're deeply ignorant, but you're going to either decide to carry along and be there. And there's nothing more exciting that I've seen than the day that Bitcoin came along and gave people the biggest education in earning, owning your own money, spending your own money, and the importance of having a fixed supply and all the pleasures and beauties that come with that and all the scams that come along and all the problems that come along um, on this journey to reinventing the future of finance. Exactly. Well said, Simon. And nobody said it was going to be easy. If it was easy, everybody would have done it. All right. So let's wrap this up. Uh, I think that was a, a great segue to get out of here. Simon, I want to say for from everybody, thanks so much. Uh, we, I appreciate you. I think a lot of people appreciate you taking the time to work for the community to get to a resolution in some way, shape or form. And hey, if it's not uh, one that you put forth, uh, that's what we talk about, but make your voices heard and come up with something else. But I think this is uh, the big issue and I'm glad we could all come together and try to figure it out uh, together as opposed to having some other TradFi bail us out. So Simon, thanks so much. We all appreciate it. Okay, and awesome for all the work you've done, Rob. Um, I think you've got a very pragmatic way. I think you're educating people in a good way um, and I think you're willing to learn at the same time, the same time as educating people and I think the education is the most important thing that comes out of this because when you're more educated, you make better investment decisions and that's what you've got to get out of this. No matter what happens, take responsibility, even when it's not your own fault, learn from it um, and you'll move forwards and you'll press on and you'll be a soldier for whatever happens. 
I like that. All right, everybody. So if you like today's video, thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, that is it. You can find those links in the description. Also, you can check out uh, Simon on his YouTube channel. Also check him out on Twitter. He's very prolific as he uh, gives you updates. That's it for today. So everybody, thanks so much for stopping by. We do appreciate it. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.